to go through how we take the raw data that comes off of a test machine after a tensile test and manipulate that into a stress strain curve. So, as you can see here, we have three columns worth of data, and this is what the data looks like when it comes off of the test machine. As you can see, in column A, we have the load in kilonewtons. In column B, we have the position in millimeters. And in column C, we have the extension in millimeters. As we've seen in previous slides, we need two equations in order to transform this data into our stress strain values. And that is, stress is equal to force over area, and strain is equal to the change in gauge length over the original gauge length. And we'll put these equations down in the bottom right hand corner here so we can refer back to these at any time. In order to use these two equations, there are two other values that we need to know. And these are gauge length and cross-sectional area. These are measured before the test. And in this case, they were measured to be 12.73 millimeters for the gauge length and the cross-sectional area was worked out to be 16.046 millimetres squared. And we'll put these here so we can use them when we're calculating our stress strain values, which we'll put in column D and E. We're now ready to calculate our stress strain values. Let's start off by calculating our strain values. So if we pop strain in column D here, and we refer back to our formula in the bottom right-hand corner, we can see that strain is equal to the change in gauge length, which is represented by our x densometer channel here, over the original gauge length, which we have here. Now, we're gonna drag and drop this equation down the column so it figures out our strain values to each one of our data points. This means that we want the x densometer portion of the equation to change for each data point, but we want the gauge length to stay the same. So, a shortcut that we can use here is if we hit F4, it pops a dollar sign in front of the letter and the number of the gauge length portion of the equation. So this will stay the same when we drag and drop this equation down the column. So now if we hit return, we select the cell and we double click the small square in the bottom right hand corner of this cell and it will drag and drop our equation down the strain column. Now that we've calculated our strain values, let's go ahead and calculate our stress values. So we'll put stress in column E, and we're gonna calculate stress in terms of megapascals. So we'll put megapascals here so we know what we're dealing with. Now, if we refer back to our equations in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, we can see that stress is equal to force, which is represented by our load column here in A, over the cross-sectional area, which we have here. And we're going to do the same F4 trick as we did for the strain values. And there's also one other thing that we need to do to this equation. So we know that the load is in kilonewtons, and we're going to megapascals here. So in order to get our units correct, we need to times this by 1,000. So we pop this equation in brackets here, and times by 1,000, then we're in the right units. So we hit return. And as before, we select the cell, double click the square at the bottom right hand corner of the cell here. And there we have our stress values calculated for all of our data points. Now that we've calculated our stress strain values for all of our data points, we can now go ahead and create a stress strain curve. So in order to do that, we need to highlight both the stress and the strain columns, come up to the insert tab, move across to the graph section and select an X, Y scatter graph. This creates our stress strain curve. If we right click on the stress strain curve here, we can move the chart to a new sheet. And this will allow us to edit the chart and have it in a bigger view. So there are two other things that we need to do to this chart before it's ready. And that is add a chart title and label the axis. So let's add a chart title. We could put stress, versus strain, and the material is 300M. Now, let's add some axis titles. So we come over here, we can add this, and this is strain. And because strain is unitless, we don't have to put anything else here. And then if we add the vertical axis title, 
This is stress, and this is in megapascals. So we put that there. And there we have it, our stress drain curve. Join me in the next video, and we'll go through how we extract the tensile properties from this chart and from the data. Thank you.